Praising the Lord, Father, we thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence, to be reminded that we belong to you, to be reminded of who we are. Uh, we enjoy the opportunities of being reminded who you are. Thank you that today you will remind us of who we are, and thank you that we will step into that understanding and never come out of it again. I thank you, Father, for a spirit of wisdom and understanding being released upon this house and that your word will go forth and it will accomplish everything that it was intended to accomplish today. I thank you, Lord, that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart will be acceptable unto you and that while I'm ministering to the people, I thank you, Lord, for a fresh download in my spirit as well. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. 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 Well, good to see you. Thank God for you. Hello to everybody on Periscope or YouTube or wherever you will see this. Uh, we thank you for being there. Please be kind enough to invite your friends and followers. If you are on an Apple, I believe it is left to right or right to left. Figure it out. If you are on a Samsung, it's up to down or down to up. Figure it out, right? Do you go up to down or up and down? So you have to figure out how to do that. But thank you for being there and getting acquainted by making sure all of your followers know where we are today. Uh, we have an outline that we're following today. And on this outline, I have a number of scriptures. We're going to work through the scriptures and allow them to minister to us in a very special way. The first scripture is Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. And we're going to be looking at verses 5 through 18. So if you're there on Periscope, uh, write that down. Somebody put it up on Periscope. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 5 through 18. If you're here in the audience, you have an outline. And I'm looking at the New Living Translation. So Hebrews chapter 2. And I'm beginning with verses 5 through 17, okay? Make sure you get that up on Periscope. Make sure your friends have it. Now listen, I want you... And I want to start off with the topic. I know uh, if you allow this to operate in your life, it's going to be a blessing to you. The topic of my message is, do you have something to write with, by the way? Yes? Please get something to write with. Very important. You ready? The topic of my message is, and you're going to write this in, and I want you to, to deal with what we're going to write in. And I want you to look around. Are you, are you ready? Okay, those of you on Periscope, get ready. I'm going to give you the topic here. All right? You're going to write this down. Look around in the audience here and see which person in the audience, what person's name should go in the blank. Are you ready? Jesus is just like who? Look around. Look around in the audience. Look around. Look around. Whose name should go there? Whose name should go there? Jesus is... <laughs> I hear some of you laughing. Jesus is just like, did you write a name in? Did you write a name in? Did you look around? <laughs> Somebody didn't look around. You just wrote your name in? Put, put, did you write a name in? Huh? Did you write one in? Okay. Now listen, listen. I want you to get the impact of this because it's, it should sink in today. It is still messing with my head as I am looking at this again. This is where we have to go in God. If. You did not write your name in. Scratch that name out and write your name in. Because Jesus is just like you. I'm going to show you from the word. I'm going to show you from the word. We're going to grapple with it. And, and, and once I get the understanding of that, something about me changes. You ready? So what do we say? Jesus is what, everyone? Jesus is, come on, come on. Jesus is what? Just like me. 
Just like you. Put it in. Put it in. So if my name was Kathy, I would write in Jesus is just like Kathy or Mary. Whatever your name is, you write it in. And I'm going to give you, listen, I'm going to give you the Bible proof that Jesus is just like you. Listen. And the flip side, which is harder to deal with, is you are Now that's the hardest side to deal with. You ready? It's hard enough. Jesus is just like me. The flip side of that is I am just like him. Let that sink in. I know. Let me give you scripture. Let me give you scripture. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. We're in Hebrews chapter 2. If you really want to have some fun and want to go deep, read Hebrews chapter 1. It will blow your mind. The writer is really laying out some things. We're in chapter 2. I start with verse number 5 because there's so many issues that we've done 1 through 4. We would spend some time there. So you will see I skip a couple of verses. But man, read Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 2, start with verse number 5. You ready? Amen. 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 Thank you. Somebody said they're ready. And do you have your thinking cap on? Is your brain still engaged and you're just thinking about what you're going to eat for dinner? Which one? Okay. No, because listen, listen. Well, let me, let me just stay here and try to get it across. Um, yes. Furthermore, it is not angels who will control the future. Do you see it in your text? Okay, did you put up Hebrews chapter 2, 5, 18? It is not angels who will control the future world we're talking about. So they were already talking about a world, right? Verse 6. For in one place the scriptures say, What are people that you should think of them? Or a son of a man that you should care for him. Yet you made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. Can I pause for a moment? Would you be honest with yourself as we go through this and double check on yourself in just a moment? We're going to read this and I want you in a moment to go back and notice what you're going to miss as a result of reading through it and not understanding what it's saying. Would you be honest and go back and do that? All right, all right. So now, what verse are we on? Verse number seven. Yet he made him a little lower than the angels and crowned them with what? Glory. Glory and honor. You gave them authority over all things. Now when it says all things, it means nothing is left out. But we have not yet seen all things put under their authority. Verse nine. What we do see is Jesus, who was given a position, a little lower than the angels, and because he suffered death for us, he is now crowned with glory and honor. Yes, by God's grace, Jesus tasted death for everyone. And let me just pause and throw this in. It's not my sermon notes. When it talks about he tasted death, that is a term they use, meaning he drank the whole thing. We, we use it for just taste. But in their time of using it, tasted, he drunk this stuff for you. So there's no more for you to taste the pain of it, the bitterness of it, right? We'll talk about that a little more. Verse number 10, God for whom and through whom everything was made chose to bring many children into glory. And it was only right that he should make Jesus through his suffering a perfect leader fit to bring them into their salvation. So now Jesus and the ones he makes holy have the same father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. Your brain is still engaged? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Go down to verse number 14. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For, as, for only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. 15. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. Now we're dropping down to verse number 17. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. Verse 18. Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us 
when we are being tested. You got it? Amen. Now, we're going to break it down. Now, let me give you some statements and let them roll around in your head and see where we end up. You ready? Here's the first statement. It's point number two in your lesson. Jesus, let me get my slides ready. You ready? Jesus was made to be just like me. Can you write that in? Jesus was what, everyone? Made to be just like me. Me, you ready for the second part? So I would be able to live how? Just like him. Let it sink in. Let it sink in. So Jesus was made to be what, everybody? Just like me. So that I would be able to do what? Live how? Just like him. You got it? So, so Jesus is just like me. And I am what? Just like him. So listen, Jesus in me is me in Jesus. Jesus died and rose from the grave. And when I die, what would I do? I will also bring from the dead. Yes. Oh man, I got a slow audience in here today. Okay. So listen, you all go to sleep. I'll preach and enjoy the sermon myself. Okay. Jesus died and rose from the grave. And when I die, I will also rise from the grave. Why? Because he is just like me. And I am just like him. And when he died, he rose from the grave. Therefore, when I die, I will also because I am just Are you getting it? Go to point number three. Stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Jesus was then. Come on, are you writing it down? Man, I feel the presence of God here. But that's all right. I'm going to enjoy this for some Because it's changing me rapidly. Anybody want to change rapidly? Hmm. Jesus was then, T-H-E-N, then, ready? Who I am now. <laughs> so that I can what? Now be who he is. Yeah, are you getting it? No, 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 you got it? Oh, yeah, somebody in the back got it. Okay, so let's do it again. Jesus is what, everybody? Jesus was then who I am now so that I can now be what? Who he is. Who he is. Now, if, if, if this sinks in, you will be motivated to enforce the will of God on earth. As a son or daughter of God, I look one over your head. Okay. okay, let's clear up a few things. Let's clear up a few things. Stay, stay with me. I'm, 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 I, I got to I got to teach this to make sure we got it in our spirits for where God is leading. So you, I, I feel you. are there with me. You're there with me. So let's clear up a couple of things. You notice the, the text mentions about angels. Angels are not going to be in charge and all that kind of stuff. Do you know why they were doing that? Because if you read chapter 1, the Jews, right? Chapter 1, Hebrews written to the Jews because they were struggling with some errors. And one of the errors they had fallen into is that a lot of things they had received from angels or from messengers. Okay? So you remember when God gave the Moses, gave the law to Moses? Right? Angels presented it to him, that type of thing. Angels were involved in the freedom from uh, uh, Egypt and all that kind of thing. So they made it very clear that the messengers that helped them out, they had gotten into a point where they were starting to worship the messengers. And if you read, listen, read, just read Hebrews uh, chapter 1. It talks about how are you going to uh, survive if you neglect this great salvation that came through Jesus, right? And it talks about how uh, back then they were punished when they did wrong. And imagine if they were punished if they, if they did something wrong back then. And now Jesus has come as a son of God and you're not following him. You're going to be really jacked up. So he clears up this angel thing. And the argument becomes, if you think angels are something, you really should take a good look at Jesus. Are you following? Wait a minute. And take a good look at human beings. 
Any human beings in here? Yes. Any, the root word for the word angel is messenger. Now we can go into Psalms and argue we were made a little lower than Elohim. We can argue also the messengers. But, but in this context, they're laying, laying it out. These are messengers. These are messengers. God's messengers are powerful, but they're not to be worshipped. And, and I know you're saying, Pastor, you don't even need to preach that to me. I don't worship angels, right? Nobody in here worships angels, right? But since angels are messengers, follow where I'm going. There are good things that you can get sidetracked into worshiping and obeying and following more than you're following God. Stay with me. So he's talking about, and I'm just giving you the background. We're going to go verse by verse. Give me an example. I can, I can, since you're, you're, you're holy, you never do anything wrong. I can spend more time with what God blesses me with and who God blesses me with. I can spend so much time with them that I don't have time to be with the blessed sir. Are, are you hearing me? Yes, yes I can. I can spend eight hours on the job, two hours in traffic, three hours on the phone, two hours eating and fixing food, ten minutes exercising because I'm just walking them downstairs. <laughs> and I call it exercise. You know, you know I, I, I didn't take the elevator. I walked them down the stairs and I call that exercise. Yeah, that's not the gym anyway. So now, two to three hours watching TV and this favorite show. And I'm being kind, am I right? Okay, I'm being real kind. I can spend an hour to two hours getting dressed. Oh, I know I'm being kind. Depending on how much time you spend. Okay, I'm not going to mess with y'all. I'm not going to because my wife is not here to help me to back up. Amen? So I'm going to leave it alone. And then I can spend six to seven hours trying to sleep. Amen? So I would have used up my 26 hours of my 24-hour day. Somebody know what I'm talking about? So who am I really worshiping? Oh, say that again. Because <laughs> that went over your head, didn't it? Because you, you, you thought I was going to say you worshiping God. If, if everything good gets my time and my attention to where I don't have time for God, who am I worshiping? I am worshiping the messengers. You, 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 you didn't hear that. You didn't hear. Did you, did you get that? Say it again. Say it again. The, the problem in Hebrews, they, they were comparing the messengers who brought good stuff to Jesus. And he was saying, no, no. If you think that's something, you better look at Jesus. Because if you neglect what Jesus has for you, you're really going to get messed up. And then I went to say, the messengers bring me good things. So the stuff that God gives me can take up so much of my time that I have no time for the God who gave me the stuff. Are you following that? So God gave me 24 hours in a day. I would take 26 of those hours and not give him one. And at the end of the day, I would tell God, I don't have any time for you, which means I've been worshiping somewhere else. Hello out there. <laughs> Did you all catch the football? I just threw one at you, all right? Now, let's walk through the text. Let's walk through the text. Are you ready? Amen, amen. amen. I'm, by the way, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, but I have to, have to say, when, when I'm saying stuff, I'm not trying to make you mad or put you down. Or you, you're clear about that, amen? Amen. amen. Because sometimes people tell me stuff, and I can, I can get upset. And then I think about it. I can be preaching, and people getting upset. I'm, my, my goal is not to get you upset. My goal is for you to notice. Look at your own life. How much time does God get? Right, right, right. If God is not getting any time, and you are spending more time with the good messengers, then you are worshiping them, not God. Amen, somebody. Okay, let's look at the text. Let's look at the text. So I did I, I dealt with the angel thing. We can deal with that later. All right? Now, walk through the text. Notice what you did not see. That's not a put down. When I read this text last night, I was asking God for it. He put me here. I didn't see it. I had to read it over and over and over again. If you read, if you take any passage of the Bible that you don't understand and you read it a hundred times and pray over it, the text itself will open up and come out and talk to you. Watch, it's going to talk to us. You ready? Say, speak to me. 
<laughs> okay, verse number five, here we go. Furthermore, it is not angels who will control the future world. Did we get that clear? Yes, yes. Okay, angels are not going to be in charge. Listen to me on Periscope. Verse number six. For in one place the scriptures say, what are people? Do you have something to write with? Underline it. Can you underline those words? What are the words in the Bible? What are people? Whoa, that's something deep. Are there any people here? <laughs> Do you know any people? Do you have any people? <laughs> so who are we talking about here? Thank you. What are people that you should think of them? You getting this? Or a son of man that you should care for him. So here's the question. What are people, God, that you should even think about them? Or the son of a man that you should even care? Now watch this. Verse number seven. Everybody sit up straight and get this. Yet you did what? Made. You made them only. Now who are the them we're talking about? Uh, the people, right? You made them what? Only what, everybody? A little lower than. The angels. So did you underline that? And then if we look at Psalm, we look at the word Elohim and made a little lower. You know, so we're, we're you know, we'll, we'll get into all of that, what that means, time frame and everything. Another sermon. And what else did you do with them? Come on, come on, come on. And you did what? Crown them with what? Glory and honor. Now, 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 now stay with me. Stay with me. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Lord, help me. Give me time. So now, I, I. Is this something that has already been done? Look at it, look at it. Huh? Has this already been done? It says you made them. So yes, thank you, thank you. So this has already been made, right? You got it? I'm not making it, it's already made, right? So you already did what? You made them, what everybody? A little lower than angels. And you are not crowning them, you have already crown them so that's already happened right and what did you crown them with thank you Lord you crowned them with what everybody glory and honor now who are we talking about people come on come on thank you you got it there in the back now now get this get this and look at verse number nine what else did you do you gave gave means I'm not giving it to you I already gave it so if, yeah I, I, you you already have it if I gave it to you right so what? Come on, come on, y'all. You what? Gave them what? Authority over all things. Did you underline that? Okay, so what do you have underlined? You should have underlined what our people, you should have underlined a little lower than the angels, crowned with glory and honor, and they have what? Authority <laughs> over now, did you see that when you first read it? No, this is just a boring scripture when we first read it. Isn't that right? right. Come on, say amen. Be honest, y'all. <laughs> now, come on, be honest. You just read it, right? Boring. Now we're going to go deeper. Now, look, when it says all things, it means, you got to underline the next four words. Nothing is what, everybody? Come on, come on, come on, y'all. Did you underline those four words? Okay, let's go deeper. But we have not seen all things put under their authority. Wow. So listen, listen, listen. So this has happened, but the, the writer is saying, but we don't see it. But, look at verse number nine, but we do see. <laughs> Come on, are you ready? And who do we see? What we do see is who? Jesus, you're going to underline that, who was given a what? Come on, come on. He was given a what? Come on, y'all. He was given a position. And what was the position? Come on. You're going to underline that a little more than the angels. And because he suffered death for us, he is now, what everybody? He is now. Yeah. He's now crowned with what? Yes, by God's grace. Jesus tasted death for everyone. Can you underline that? Now, what do you have underlined so far? You have who are people. Do you have that underlined? And then you have the position. Yes. And then you have the past tense. They were what? Crowned, Crowned with what? Glory. Glory and honor. Then, and then, and then everything is under their feet. Everything, right? 
And then we say, we don't see that. But <laughs> who do we see? Jesus. We see Jesus. And with Jesus, it gives us his position, right? And he is what, everybody? And he is, oh, yes, he's crowned. Do you see it? He's crowned with what, everybody? Okay, could you put your hand over your heart and just say, Holy Spirit, open this up for me. Okay, you ready? In order to demonstrate to us, you're still here? What is actually possible? Jesus came to earth to fly a plane we wouldn't get in. To fly the plane we had lost. We are refusing to board a plane that he has taken over. In order to demonstrate to us what is possible, Jesus came to earth to live as you and me. To demonstrate what we can now do as him. Look at the text again. You're not sure you see it. Verse 6 and 7. Go back to verse 6 and 7. Well, go to verse 7. Go to verse 7. Do you see glory and honor in there? Yeah. Who are they talking about in verse number 7? Glory and honor? Jesus. Huh? Jesus. Who are they talking about in verse 7? Jesus. They're talking about people. And, and then verse 8. Who are they talking about in verse 8? People. And what have they been given? Authority. They've been given authority over what? Oh, woo! All things. And what does Jesus say before he wraps things up? All power and authority has been given unto me. I'm ahead of my sermon. So notice, <laughs> we've been given authority over all things. Which, which is a statement saying everything has been put in order. Stay with me. And, and nothing <laughs> on earth is able to get out of order that has been put in order. It would not be able to resist falling in line because you have that kind of authority. But then the scripture says, we don't see everything like that. Is that what it says? We don't see the order. But what do we see? We see Jesus. And where is Jesus? He's in the same position we are in. Are you seeing that? And because he goes through the suffering of the cross, guess what? He is crowned with what? Glory Wait a minute, what were we crowned with? Glory and so he is crowned with what? Glory he is crowned with glory and honor, just like who? Ooh, are you getting that? Okay, okay, let me say it another way. Let me say it another way. This is a car I'm fascinated with by. It changes, so don't worry. There might be another car next time. <laughs> fascinated by the car because it's like, it's like uh, I haven't driven one, but they say it's like driving an iPad. <laughs> All right. So every chance I get, I get to sit in one. So, but so let's imagine. Let's imagine I have I have a Tesla sitting in my driveway. You, you follow? Yes. Come on. You can imagine. I can imagine. You should be able to imagine, right? So I got a Tesla sitting in my driveway. It's mine. It's all paid for, but I don't drive it for whatever reason. I'm not driving. And then my big brother comes over to my house, and my big brother pulls up. In his Tesla. He's driving his. He's enjoying his. Listen. After I see my big brother driving his Tesla. Listen. What would I be thinking? What would I be feeling? Is there anything I would want to talk to my big brother about? <laughs> Jesus was placed in the same position you are in. Get this. And because he suffered and died for you, paid the price for all of your late starts, paid the price for all of your self-condemnation. Have you ever gone to take a test and you got there late? And you ran out of time, you know what I'm saying? Anybody know about that? Jesus drove the car God assigned for you to drive. Went down in your position, watch this, and then went up to receive the award you had already been given. <laughs> Did you see that? 
Because, because people have been crowned with what? Right, right. <laughs> and people have all authority given unto them. So Jesus comes down and behaves like a people. <laughs> and shows people how to drive. <laughs> then he goes up to heaven and he's crowned with your reward. Same thing. And he declares when he's getting ready to leave, all authority is in my hand. I give that back to you. You're, you're not getting it. You're not getting it. You're not getting it. So the, the action we know occurred in the past, right? It has already happened. You already have the car, but because of the tricks and intimidation of the devil, you're not driving the car you've been given. Oh, yeah. And you've already been crowned with glory and honor. Okay, imagine this. Imagine, here's another way of looking at it. Imagine, you, 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 are, you are the child of wealthy parents. I mean, really wealthy parents, right? Okay, and tomorrow morning, somebody shows up at your house <laughs> announcing that they are your long-lost brother. Now, you were the only child. And now here comes somebody else saying, I'm your long-lost brother or your long-lost sister. Can you imagine something like that? Okay, you, you didn't imagine a wealthy parent, so we're, we're going to the other side. <laughs> so what are you going to do? You're going to question. And you're going to investigate, isn't that right? You're going to do a blood test, isn't that right? You're going to check it, yeah, you're going to check it out. Because you don't want them to show up and start claiming part of your inheritance. Am I right about it? Let's say the DNA comes back and it proves they are your flesh and blood relative. <laughs> now, what are you going to do? This means... <laughs> Somebody got to die. No, this means... <laughs> that what you were going to get all by yourself from your parents, now <laughs> you got to share and probably share and share alike. Who knows? They will be able to say to you in your face, I am just like you. Ooh, this is what the Bible is trying to say. This is what's holding up the return of Jesus. Because he's going to come back for people who look just like him. Not with our facial features, but how we behave, how we think, how we operate. The sons and daughters will be manifested on the earth. Wow. Listen, we don't see ourselves doing what Jesus did, right? But to prove to us, to us that we can do what Jesus did... Jesus was made just like you and me. So he can show us what we are capable of doing from our current position. I think I'm over your head today. Airplane lands somewhere. <laughs> okay, let me say another. What was Jesus' reward? What was Jesus' reward for doing his thing as a human? Glory and honor. <laughs> he got up and same thing. Are you getting that? Same reward. Now, Jesus won back, listen, Jesus won back for us what we already had but lost the ability to use. Right. And now we see him. We see him. The Bible said, we don't see us with everything under, but we see Jesus, right? And then we see him. We look at that. We're just like him. He was rewarded. Part of his reward is to receive what you've already been given. Okay, look at this way, this way. Y'all you, still in the room? Because I, I got more to say. I'm, I'm trying to bring this in. It's, it's, it's not going to be crazy. It's, 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 it's act, actually asking you to stand up and live like a son or daughter of God. That's what it's actually asking you to do. Look, look at this way. I'm graduating. And I remember there at, at uh, where was it, uh, Dominguez Hall, oh, thousands of us in there, right? But I had my little seat on the road somewhere. <laughs> Are you following? So you, you may have got more cords and had more sublotties and all the dotties up by your name. But I'm just like you. I got a robe like you. Are you listening? I got paper like you. I'm at the same. We are the same. Because when you walked across the thing, they gave you the same thing. 
said they'd give you more, but they gave you something that's just like mine. So when Jesus came up, he was rewarded with your reward. Why? Because he's just like Oh, I know, I know. You're still shaking it off. <laughs> You're still shaking it off. Listen, Jesus wins back what we already have because those past tense crowned, but we lost the ability to use. So he receives a reward, this thing we already have, which helps us see that we're just like him. So, da, 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 da. Jesus, what you going to get? Crown me with glory and honor. Here you come. Da, 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 da. You already got the glory and honor. <laughs> okay. We are not Jesus. Listen, I'm not Jesus. There's only one Jesus. Amen. But I am just like him. I know, I know. You're still struggling with that. Point number four. Point number four. Let me help you. Point number four. You ready? Amen. Amen. You are not the father. No, wrong, wrong story. So you are not. <laughs> oh, man. Y'all got to give me a periscope. I got an audience here that's so serious. You know? I don't know where you're going today. <laughs> Am I in the Word? <laughs> I hear you. Somebody said, but Pastor, I haven't been in the Word so long. I'm not sure even if you're in the Word. But anyway, number four, you are what? Did you write that down? So let's be clear. You are what? Tell your neighbor, you're not Jesus, so get out of my face. No, don't tell them the last part, but you're not Jesus. There's only one Jesus, but you are what? Whoa. Did you get that? Huh? You are what? You're not Jesus. There's only one, but you are. Okay, can we look at the text again? Okay, a few more minutes, a few more minutes. Let's go over it again. This time... Let's start with verse number 10. You ready? Amen. Okay, and God, for whom, through whom everything was made, what did he do? He yeah. chose to do what? Bring many, many idiots? No, many what? Children. children. Are you a child of God? Amen. Amen. Now watch this. And it was only right, because he's getting ready to make children, right? Bring them in. It was only right that he should do what? Make Jesus. Are you getting this? Huh? Can you underline that? Because, because Jesus, Jesus became you so that you can have him in everything. He became it. He made Jesus through his suffering a what? Perfect leader, fit to do what? Bring them into their salvation. Verse 11. So now. Jesus and the ones, what is he going to do with you? The ones he what? Makes holy. Is he making you holy? Guess what? You have? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> if I got the same father, huh? I'm not my sister who has the same father, but I'm like her. Y'all not hearing that. So if we have the same father, can I be like him? <laughs> and if we have the same father made, is he like me? All right, y'all are still not there. Okay, verse number 14. Well, let's finish that one. Let's finish that one. So he makes them, they have the same father. And this is why, look at verse number 11. This is why Jesus is what? Not ashamed to call them his what? Have you ever met somebody you'd be ashamed <laughs> to let somebody know they're in your family? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm serious. Have you ever, yeah. ooh, you know, they start acting crazy and you just you start walking away. You just start walking, get as far as you. Anybody got relatives like that? Okay, you're the one, right? They're walking away from you? <laughs> okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But listen, Jesus is, and we crazy people. And Jesus said, I'm not ashamed to call you my, oh my Lord. So you can drop this self-esteem kind of deal going on, right? Verse number 14. Because God's children are... Whoa, any human beings in here? Huh? I know we've got a couple of ghosts in here, but any human beings? They're made of, what everybody? Flesh and... Come on, come on, y'all. So the Son also... Can you circle that word became? What did he become? Why? Because he was trying to make sure he would be just like who, everybody? For 
Only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. Verse 17. Therefore, it was what everybody? Necessary. necessary. You're going to have to underline this. It was necessary for him to be what? Made, Made in Oh, my Lord. Are you writing that down? Made in every respect like you. Right? His what, everybody? His brothers and his sisters. So that he can be our what, everybody? Merciful and faithful high priest where? Before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice. Would take away the sins of the people. Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing. He is what everybody? Able to help you when you are when you're being tested. So here's the issue. Jesus is just like me. And I am just like him. Jesus stopped listen, being only God and became flesh and blood. Amen. Having the need to brush his teeth and to comb his hair. Jesus didn't just divinely. <laughs> Come on, y'all. He had to wash behind his ears. He could not hold his breath forever. Come on. He laughed. He cried. People lied on him. People looked at him funny. He did not act like everybody. He went through all of those experiences. Have you, have you ever been at a family dinner? And at the family dinner, you just know cousin cornbread is coming, right? And, and they're going to ask you what you're doing with your life, you know. And it's the one that ain't never, you know, barely even flunk in third grade, you know. But here comes cousin cornbread. And, and they're going to look at you. And they look at your life. And you, no matter what you're doing in life, it's never good enough to that stand. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And, 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 and you said, you, you should have married by now. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Or you should have stayed with so-and-so. You remember the one you were with and you glad you got away. But Cornbread don't know anything about the details because you can't tell him, right? But you, know, you should have stayed with so-and-so. Anybody know about that? Have you ever been in a family gathering? And here they come with somebody that they are sure you ought to marry and be with. And you can see them coming and you're trying to get away. And they have you sit next to the person. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 right here. And then, and then, and then they look at you and say, "Well, honey, tell us what you do." And you, you tell them what you do, and then they say, "Did you hear that?" <laughs> Y'all never had that happen. Okay. Jesus had to deal with that. I'm sure. I'm sure I don't have the Bible from it, but somebody probably tried to hook him up with somebody from Galilee. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's there working on wood and getting buffed and everything. Oh, come on, Jesus. You ought to be named right about now. Come on, Jesus. Have you seen Sister Sally over in Galilee? <laughs> she was out there watching you, you know, carrying the logs for your daddy. Oh, y'all not willing to go there. <laughs> Stay with me because I'm getting ready to shift. It may be, listen, easier for some of us to believe that Jesus is like us. But we struggle to believe that we are just like him. Easier to accept the fact he came my way. It's harder to accept the fact I can go his way. It, 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 it's a two-way street. He came down so you can go up. And when he got up, what is the reward? The same thing. I struggle. I, I allow the limitations of my flesh and blood to become the framework of what is possible in the spirit. Because in the spirit, we don't, we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. We actually make things in the spirit and have them produced in the, the physical realm. Jesus, Jesus, he, he comes along. Uh, I, I, I got a text here to show you. One, John, John 1. Do you see point number five? Are you still there? Yeah. 
I know I need to stop. John 1, point number 5. Here, here's an example. They approached, uh, they were coming up to where Jesus was, and Jesus said, do you see where I am in John 1, 47, uh, 47, 48, Periscope, John 1, 47, 48. Jesus said, now, so they, they're coming up to him. Jesus said, now, here is a genuine son of Israel, a man of complete integrity. Notice the man's response, 48. How do you know that about me, Nathaniel asked. Jesus replied, what? I could see you under the fig tree before Philip found you. You are just like him. The Holy Spirit will give you supernatural words of knowledge that don't feel supernatural. Jesus wasn't going around buzzed all the time. <laughs> he was naturally supernatural. So last week, I know, I know, I know. Yo, yo, you remember last week? We came in here, we prayed. Did we have some people in here praying? People, people, just like Jesus. Yes, we came in here, we prayed. We asked the Holy Spirit to show us. Holy Spirit said, uh, there's going to be a lady in pink with long hair that you are going to minister to. There's going to be a lady with two children. There's going to be this person, that person. And we went out. Do you all remember? Do I have any witnesses here? We went out. Are you listening to me? We went out. And the first five minutes, I didn't see anybody that looked like anybody. God said, I'm serious. I was there. I had to apologize to God later on for doubting him. Five minutes, I was in doubt. It don't take me long to get in doubt. Isn't that a shame? Got to get moved on over. Five minutes, I said, Lord, Lord, I'm, I'm trusting you. I'm believing you. I prayed. I talked in faith. Five minutes, couldn't find nobody. And all of a sudden, we started seeing people out there that we saw in here. Why? Because we are just like him. I remember the man that I was talking to at the car. And I didn't realize it until later <laughs> that one of the things that would happen to me is that I would talk to the man at the car. And it was interesting, when we started talking to him, I wasn't prophesying, I was just sharing a word of encouragement, and then all of a sudden I started seeing stuff in his family. And I started talking to him about stuff going on in his family. And he said, yeah, you know you're right. And the more I talked, the more I saw what was going on in his family. He said, yeah, you're right. Angie, you were there with me and Kathy. And he was like, wow, wow, wow. And we were talking that people are just like Y'all going to get it one day. Are you still in the room? Lord, help me. Even after the experience of outreach and actually finding people on the list. My wife, boy, my wife, and you know how she is. She's checking it all. Woo! We found this one. And we found, woo! We found this one. We found, woo! We found this one. We found, woo! We found this one. We found, woo! All the way down the list. And she'll check. I said, baby, don't like her. You know, I'm thinking we might miss it. No, she said, baby, you got, you got 80 out of, of, of 100. And then she kept going. She said, you all got 90 out of 100. And I was still looking around looking for Bob. Bob. I walked up to me, Bob, hey, Bob. Couldn't find Bob. Bob, Bob, Bob. It turned out that there was a Bob when I made the call and was able to talk and get the thing over to Bob. I found Bob before the end of the day, who was also dealing with, you remember on the list, the grief issue. Amen. Come on, y'all. Anyway. So even after that, we struggle. Listen. Because we don't believe God could actually be speaking to us because it doesn't sound like God speaking to you. Are you hearing me? We get frozen, listen, by the fear of being wrong. Anybody know about that? Yes. Yes. Rather than being motivated by the desire to hear right. See, I want, I want to hear more. I want to be more surrendered so that I won't hesitate. So that the first five minutes, rather than doubting God, I'd be saying, thank you, Lord. <laughs> They're on the way. I could be praising God 
I could be making angels happy. You follow what I'm saying? I could be in a whole nother place. Wouldn't you want to be there? If so, say amen. 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 We are afraid that when we fly, we might fly into a wall. Therefore, we don't fly at all. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are gifts for the members of the body of Christ. Did you get that? Amen. Thank you. <laughs> They're gifts given because you are part of the family. Jesus operated in spiritual gifts of the Son of God. Guess what? You are just like him. So you get to operate in what, everybody? Spiritual gifts. He operated in them without measure, but as a member of the family, guess what? You get to receive at least one, and you can ask for more. Ah, oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> and you ready for this? Whether you're ready or not, I'm going to shout it out. <laughs> when we all come together in unity, we become the body of Christ. <laughs> and therefore, Christ is there outside doing ministry with power because we came together. Ah. And now all of us can do what he did on earth and more. Okay. You remember, you remember Jesus went to resurrect Lazarus from the grave? Right? Mary, Mary, that was crying. And, and, and what's his sister name? Yes. And they, they called for Jesus. And by the time Jesus arrived, Lazarus was dead, right? And then Jesus, what did he do? Release the power of God. Father, I thank you. Right? Why? Because everything, I have authority over everything. Hmm? Yeah. Smith, Smith Wigglesworth, the record about some miracles and healings he did. One, one man that he raised from the dead, he had the kind of faith that the man was dead. He went in the room, grabbed the man, and threw him against the wall and said, live. And the man lived. Jesus raised people from the dead. And because we are like him, guess what? Wow. Guess what? <laughs> yeah. All right, hit your neighbor. They're starting to go to sleep. Tell them past thing on three, five more minutes. Yeah. Point number six, Acts chapter nine. Periscope, I hope you're all awake. If you're awake, put Acts chapter 9 on there. Verses 36 to 41. What I'm trying to say to Periscope, because they're, they're not listening, is that we are like Jesus, and Jesus is like us, right? And Jesus has stuff he wants us to do, so I have to get out of me and get into him so I can make it happen. You got it? Okay. Acts chapter 9. Look at this. Look at this. Acts chapter 9. Somebody pray with me, please. There was a believer in Joppa named uh, Tabitha, which is Greek for Dorcas, right? She was always doing kind things for others and helping the poor. About this time, what happened? She became ill and she died. Her body was washed for burial and laid in an upstairs room. But the, the believers had heard what? So who was not nearby? Jesus. Ah. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. So, 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 so listen, listen, listen. So from here on in, Jesus doesn't have to be present. You have to be present. Amen. Amen. Oh, somebody can get that. So, so, whew, let, let's see if we can help her out. Who we gonna call? Peter, who denied Jesus. You remember? Peter, who was not perfect. A cussing man. Any cussings in the house? No, don't, don't stand up yet. So they heard Peter was nearby, so they sent two men, beg him, please do what? Come as soon as possible. Peter returned with them. As soon as he arrived, what did they do? 
They took him to the upstairs room, and the room was what packed with widows, and, and they were weeping and crying. Are you listening to me? Weeping and crying. No faith, no expectation. We want you to do something. Look at what she did. Look at what she did. We're not raised up because we are good. We're raised up because he is good. Nothing wrong with talking about what she did. Don't get me wrong. Verse number 40. So Peter did what? He asked. <laughs> See, a lot of us got a bunch of old widows living in our heads. <laughs> we need to ask those old widows to leave so we can do the will of God. Are you hearing me? He asked them all to leave the room. And then what did he do? He knelt down and prayed. Now, interesting thing. I know, I know, I know. I think you've been sidetracked, but I got to get serious. <laughs> interesting thing for me, the Bible doesn't record, does not record the words they said because I would memorize the words and not have to dig into the experience. Mm. Wouldn't you want to know the magic words that raise the dead? <laughs> he got on his knees. He prayed. Anybody ever been on their knees? Knowing how to pray. Then turn it to the body. He said, get up, Tabitha. What did she do? She opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she's like, oh, Peter's here. She sat up. She, he, he gave her his hand, helped her up, then called them. And all the believers. And what did he do? He presented her to them. Why was he able to do that? Because. Jesus. Yes. Come on, y'all look at that. Huh? Yes, yes, and there's nothing on earth that we don't have authority over. Wow. It's in the word. Didn't it say all things? And then it said, to make sure that we're not nothing, because sometimes I'm a little thick-headed, right? It said, and to make sure you understand when it said all, it mean, means all. Did you read that? That was in Hebrews. Come on, you all got it. Okay, okay. Listen. Let's 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 just finish here. So now. Uh, what do we want to say? So, wh what's broken? What's broken? What's broken? The power of death is broken. The power of death. There's this fear of death. And I'm, I'm, I'm examining it more as I get older. It's interesting. When I was 40, 50, when I was 20, I didn't even think it was possible for me to die. You know, I, I'd be willing to shoot at you and think I could dodge your bullets. This Seriously. That's it. I would be ducking. How you, how you gonna duck? By the time you hear it, it has gone through you. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But as I've been getting older, I've been thinking about it. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. The train is gonna stop. <laughs> Even the most devout believer can sometimes have occasions where they fear death. It is hardwired, listen, into our systems to avoid death because death is not part of the original plan. Death became necessary in response to sin. Because of sin, if we never died, we would be forever in a mess of sin. You, you think it's bad and you live to be how old you are. Imagine if you had to live through all of the garbage and it's constantly getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. We fear death because of the frailty of our physical bodies. The sudden loss of life, what happened in Belgium, the people were just trying to catch a plane. And here comes somebody ending everything. Few of us know how we would die. I'm not sure if I want to ask the Lord that. But I've heard him give me a number. And it wasn't the number I wanted. It was good. <laughs> but yeah, it was good. <laughs> but I heard him say, I will give you this. Good, not what I requested. But good. I requested 120. 120. <laughs> but, it, but it's good. <laughs> whether, but we don't know whether or not it will be quick and painless. Anybody know we, 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 don't, we don't do pain well? Or whether or not it will be peaceful. We don't know. 
And this inability to prepare specifically can be frightening. And then they can diagnose you with a terminal disease. As a kid, not understanding words, when they said terminal, I know terminals. <laughs> and so somebody had a, a terminal disease. So what, what are they plugged into? You know what I'm saying? As a kid. But I understand now. Anyway. The Christian view of death is separation. Ultimate death is ultimate separation from God. That's the second death. But in physical death, we are separated from our loved ones on earth. As Christians, we know that the separation will be as the blink of an eye compared to the time we will spend in eternity. For the Christian, our separation and death is like only a moment. A moment nearly everyone will go through or has gone through. But when the moment is over, we'll be citizens in a new heaven. We will have transformed and lovely bodies. We will have a glorious body because we are like Jesus, just as Jesus got up from the grave. Guess what? You and I, we are going to get up from the grave because we are just like Jesus. So I'm not brave because I'm willing to talk about death. I'm brave because I'm willing to trust what he said about the past that affects the future. I'm learning, listen, I'm learning how to die daily. Amen. That's the surrender. I'm learning, learning how to die daily so when it comes to the big deal, the last one, it won't be so traumatic. I won't be trying to do all of them <laughs> at one time. Are you hearing me? Amen. The second thing we get from being like Jesus, we get a merciful and faithful high priest. I gotta stop, but there, 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 that, that means there's somebody on duty all the time. Give you give you a quick picture of mercy. You know what mercy looks like. God told uh, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, I'm gonna destroy you at uh, Lot's family. You remember that? And they were dragging their feet. And you read the story, the story said the angels came and grabbed them by hands, pulling them out. Mercy. They talked about the mercy of God. Dra and, so we have a merciful high priest that will drag us out of the messes that we don't have sense enough to get out of Amen. ourselves. Uh, and then finally, Jesus knows what, how to help me. Do you get that? There are things that God would do for family that he won't do for others. You got a rich older brother who's saying, fly the plane, drive the car. Talked about Tesla before you got here. Tried to come. Amen. 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 We're going to put a video on of the song because he lives. I'm going to ask you in just a moment. We're just going to stand and, and worship God for that. And I want you to make a commitment. Your commitment today is, listen, your commitment today is not only believe that he's like me. Your commitment today is to what? Believe that I am like him, and therefore, I need to start acting like him. You got it? Is that simple? Amen. Let's, let's stand and worship. I want to say goodbye to you guys on Periscope. God bless you. Um, God bless you. Come on, we're going to put the video on. We're going to